So with that, I would like to uh, invite Dr. Vasudev Lal, who is a developer himself. He's from our Intel Labs. And Thank you, Gavita. I'm really excited to be here. Um, as we all know, large-scale transformer models have disrupted AI over the last few years. At Intel, we have been focusing on making large-scale AI model training more accessible. A key feature of the Gaudi AI Accelerator is on-chip integrated raw sports that enable extremely efficient node scaling for large AI distributed model training. Here we show the world's first 512 Gaudi pre-training run on a custom multimodal transformer training. Uh, we can see good convergence of the pre-training tasks, and the snapshot shows 512 Gaudis are activated. Now, my team and I are AI developers. We really don't care about what chips we are using or what the compiler stack is. We simply want to take our PyTorch models and we want to tune a number and say we want to scale up to 512 accelerators. And that's exactly what happened here because all our smart Intel engineers made sure that the software stack was completely ready and uh, we had a seamless transition into scaling up uh, to hundreds of AI accelerators. AI has become really good at what we call perception tasks. For example, object detection, sentiment classification, and so on. In our cognitive AI program, we are pushing the frontiers of what AI may be capable of in the future. We are building systems that can acquire common sense reasoning abilities through self-supervised learning at scale on multiple modalities, which include language, images, and text, and video, sorry. On a representative benchmark called Visual Common Sense Reasoning in Time, hosted by the Paul Allen Institute of AI, our model is at the number one spot on the public leaderboard. Our multimodal models can also answer user search queries in natural language. They can do multi-hop reasoning over multiple documents that can consist of both images and text and generate a coherent natural language answer. On a representative task, WebQA, which was a multimodal and multi-hop competition at NeurIPS last year, we made it to the winning list. This competition was hosted by Microsoft Research, Microsoft Bing, and it simulates web search. We've developed a multilingual video retrieval system, which has state-of-the-art performance on multiple video retrieval benchmarks. The zero-shot performance of this system on languages like Spanish, Russian, and Chinese is actually better than previous fine-tuned solutions. Another multimodal transformer called Bridge Tower has been jointly developed with Microsoft Research and gives state-of-the-art performance on visual question answering image text retrieval, and so on. So with the popularity of multimodal transformers growing, it's crucial to develop tools that help developers get insight into the inner workings of these systems. This kind of insight can be really useful for developers to understand how to improve their ML pipeline more. To aid in this quest, we've recently open-sourced a tool called VL Interpret. This tool helps us understand how transformers can bring about concept-level alignment through different modalities. Our paper on VL Interpret won the Best Demo Award at CVPR 2022. A crucial workload in the data center is large-scale similarity search. This powers applications like web and retail search and also recommendation systems. Our team has developed billion scale similarity search with built-in acceleration on Intel Xeon. We competed on a representative NeurIPS task, billion scale similarity search, and our solution placed first position in the TCO category for ISO, perform for ISO accuracy. Next generation AI solutions will involve both large deep learning tensor compute, which is best suited on an AI accelerator, as well as large scale graph based and search algorithms which are best suited on a CPU. 
This is a perfect match for Intel's heterogeneous compute offerings, Xeon and Gaudi. So we've had enough of slides here, time for a demo. Kavita, have you ever wanted to search for something in a video and be able to go to that exact frame in the video? Definitely, uh, Vasudev. In fact, when I'm watching movies, right, there are these scenarios where Thanos gets the uh, soul uh, the stone. I do want to go to that and see it multiple times, but I just can't do it unless I forward it. So I would love that capability. Yeah, so we've got some good news for you. So we built this video retrieval app where we can have multimodal semantic search. So we can search, um, you know, we can have queries which are very visual seeking, but those same queries can have a lot of semantic content in them. And because our models are truly multimodal, uh, we can do through multimodal semantic search within video frames. But what is the compute requirements for this? And from a developer perspective, how easy is it to use all of this? Yeah, so on our demo, which is live on the floor right now, this is running live on Xeon and Gaudi. So we use Gaudi for processing video frames through our multimodal transformer and also for processing the search query. And we build a really large search graph on, by indexing the videos. That search graph is built on Xeon where we can execute large, efficient similarity search. So this is actually a good example of an application where heterogeneous compute is really important. We need both large transformer compute as well as large similarity search. And this is why it's a really good solution for uh, Xeon and Gaudi together, which works really effortlessly on a DL1 instance. And from a developer perspective, how easy is it to uh, implement? Th this is pretty simple. Yeah. Th so like I said, my team, we, are only, we only work at the PyTorch level, and this is seamless to run on DL1. That's very important because as an AI practitioner, it's so important that I abstract myself out from the hardware and I get the performance right out of the box. But how about benchmarking and performance from a performance perspective? Productivity is great, but from a performance perspective, how does this? Yeah, so we, we've benchmarked the video transformer systems here, and we've shown in, in, in recent publications that uh, we've established new state-of-the-art on video retrieval on various benchmarks like MSR VTT, MSVDD, DI Demo, and Charades. That's amazing. So uh, this is a fun demo of a video generated on Gaudi through a diffusion model. If you saw Pat's keynote, you saw how diffusion models are really good at generating still images from language prompts. So in my team, we are really interested in extending diffusion models to generate videos as well as generate 3D content. So what does it take to generate videos uh, currently? Uh, yeah, so uh, stable diffusion models have been trained on still images and language. Consequently, they do not understand the notion of time. So we've been training them on videos so that we can teach these models temporal evolution and get them to generate a coherent set of images that can be a video. So one question on the video search previously, uh, Vasudev, is that did you have to annotate the video or create labels for you to search, or how did that work? No, no. So we don't annotate the videos. Uh, we pre-train our transformers at scale on, on various other video data sets, and then we can, just simply, um, we can just simply index new video data through our multimodal transformers. Awesome, awesome. All right. So, so thank you, Vasudev. Actually, the video where you played in the beginning, right? The challenge for you is next time we have it, I want that video generated out of these models rather than us you yes, know, yes. So, paying so, somebody to get it done. So we are going to take that as a challenge. And hopefully in one of the next innovations, we can show an AI-generated video from a script. Awesome. So here is another demo, right? Uh, the, this is now V diffusion. We showed you stable diffusion and we showed um, diffusion for video generation. But this is V diffusion that's running on Intel Data Center GPU Flex series. Again, very easy to use. It's developed from a developer perspective where a beautiful picture of a scary forest, I guess, an eerie alien forest, that's what it is. <laughs> 